The following podcast is non-profit and is based on the IGCSE history curriculum. Before I begin today's episode, I would like to thank all you listeners for your continued support of my podcast. Even if you're new, thanks for giving my podcast a try. Because of you all, I have hit another milestone of 1,250 total plays. In the series 6 of this podcast, we'll be taking a look at events in the Gulf between 1979 and 1991. This will include events in Iraq, Iran and the First Gulf War. Today, we will begin by studying why Saddam Hussein was able to come to power in Iraq. Firstly, what factors led to Saddam's rise to power? One factor was military coups. The Hashemite monarchy was overthrown by a coup in 1958. Another coup, the July Revolution of 1968, organized by the army and Ba'ath Party, overthrew President Arif. It led to the Ba'athist leader al-Bakar becoming president. Saddam played a key role in this coup. The second factor was the use of terror and fear. As he was in charge of the secret police, he often used them to control the Iraqi people, the army and the Ba'ath Party. They used torture and rape against their enemies, and those suspected of treason were imprisoned or executed. This made sure that the Iraqi people were obedient. A third factor was recruiting loyal supporters. He put families and friends in control of key positions of the government and army, so he had more power to overthrow or take control from the president. Another factor was increasing his popularity. Iraq was nationalized and the government took control over the oil industry from Britain, using the additional income to improve the quality of life and infrastructure of Iraq. They also joined OPEC against the West, as they disliked them for being against Egypt and Syria in the war with Israel. The fifth factor was controlling life in Iraq. The Ba'ath Party began controlling all aspects of Iraqi life, including the government, trade unions and sports clubs. They used education to indoctrinate young people, promoting Iraqi nationalism and rejecting foreign culture. The final factor that I am going to bring up is influence of Saddam's uncle. Saddam was brought up by his uncle, Tufla, an Arab nationalist and Ba'ath party member. He educated Saddam about Arab nationalism and socialism and persuaded him to join the Ba'ath party, and he became head of Iraqi intelligence services by the age of 26. Secondly, let's look at Saddam Hussein's purge of the Ba'ath Party. In 1979, Saddam Hussein forced President al-Bakar to resign, purged the Ba'ath Party and became president and dictator of Iraq. This purge was captured on video. At the beginning of the Ba'ath Party Central Committee meeting, a man, Abdel Hussein, who had undergone days of physical torture and was under the threat of his family's execution, was dragged into the hall and confessed that himself and others had plotted with the Syrian government to destroy the Iraqi government and overthrow the Ba'ath Party. He then began to name co-conspirators. Other members of the committee are panicked, as they are afraid that they will be named, so they begin to call out praise to Saddam Hussein and pledge their loyalty. Afterwards, the surviving half, as 68 were called, were given guns and told to shoot those who were convicted. Many of those convicted were high-ranking officials of the Ba'ath Party. Saddam had successfully wiped out any political opposition to his dictatorial rule. This is the end of the podcast. Thank you for listening.